Hello everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. It's Miss Adria here. God bless you. I love you one and all. So we're going to be talking about Valentine's Day today and learning some of the history of Valentine's Day and talking about real love and singing some songs about love. So I hope you will enjoy this lesson. Thank you for joining me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us. You love us so much that you sent your only begotten Son to this earth to die on the cross, to be resurrected the third day, and to make the way for us to have everlasting life, to be born again, and to have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Father. Bless everyone and bless this lesson. Let your Holy Spirit be on it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing some songs. Hey, God loves you and he loves those around you too. So what should you do? Lead a life of love Hey, God loves me And my friends and my family So eternally I'll lead a life of love
And now, let's say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you so much that your love never fails. Father, you love us so very much. Touch our hearts that we will know how much you love us. Fill us with your love, Father, that we will love our brothers and sisters, will love our moms and dads, and we will love others. Help us, Lord, to learn more about you and to learn today about St. Valentine, who loved people and was even a martyr for believing that marriage was from God. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for all of our blessings. I pray that you will bless everyone, keep them strong and healthy, help them to do well in school and do well at home and have love and harmony in their home and be a blessing to their mom and dad. Bless our time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Valentine's Day is celebrated every year on February 14th. But why? On February 14th, we celebrate Valentine's Day by giving our friends notes and candied hearts with messages like, Be my Valentine, or will you be mine? But Valentine's Day is much more than hugs, hearts, cards, and kisses. It all began with a man named Valentine who loved Jesus very much. Valentine, or Valentinus, as he was known, was born more than 200 years after Jesus' birth in a land called the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was so big it stretched all the way across Europe and parts of East and North Africa. It was also very powerful, conquering any tribe that dared to invade its territory. Rome was ruled by a harsh emperor named Claudius who was so mean, some called him Claudius the Cruel. He was a tall man, and he had eyes of fire. Many said he was so strong, he could knock the teeth out of a man or an animal with just one punch. Claudius was also very skilled in battle, and conquered the tribes that tried to invade the Roman Empire. But more and more tribes were becoming a threat. We need more soldiers to defeat the barbaric invaders, complained Claudius. So began his search for strong young men to fight with him. Posters were soon hung in cities and villages announcing the emperor's call for soldiers. Fight for Rome against the barbaric tribes that threaten our empire, they said. But few men responded to the emperor's call for soldiers. They knew they would have to leave behind their loved ones, their wives, mothers, fathers, children, or the women they had promised to marry, and wouldn't see them for at least 25 years. Claudius became very angry that few men wanted to become soldiers, so he decided to create a new law. There will be no weddings in Rome! declared Claudius the Cruel. The people of Rome could not believe what they had just heard. No weddings? 
they cautiously whispered in their homes and on the streets. How could the emperor do such a thing? Young men and women engaged to be married were heartbroken. Now what do we do? they cried. There was a church leader who was also surprised and saddened by the emperor's new rule. This was Valentinus. Valentinus was very troubled. Marriage was God's idea, and no emperor can hinder what God created. If we choose to marry couples secretly, we could go to prison, said Valentinus to Marius, who served with him in the church. The people of Rome already knew Valentinus and Marius would not worship the Roman gods. This could get us into more trouble, they agreed, but they decided to obey God was worth the risk. So deep in the woods, under the cover of midnight's darkness, couples would meet Valentinus to join them in marriage. But it wasn't long before news of Valentinus's secret wedding ceremonies reached the ear of Emperor Claudius. Arrest the traitor Valentinus at once, he ordered his guards, who found Valentinus and dragged him before the emperor. Valentinus's ankles and wrists were put in chains as he stood before Emperor Claudius and members of the court. Then the emperor looked fiercely at this man who disobeyed his law and said, What is this I have heard of you, Valentinus? Why will you not live in peace by obeying my laws, worshipping the Roman gods, and turning your back on your god? Valentinus looked up at the emperor and said for all to hear, If you knew about the grace of God, you wouldn't have asked me to deny him and worship idols. Claudius was stunned and shouted, How dare you challenge me? As he sat on his throne, the emperor glared at the defiant priest standing before him and asked him another question. Is Jesus God's son? Valentinus smiled, and with his face glowing with joy, he said, Yes, Jesus is God's son, and if you believe in him, your soul will be saved. Claudius sat on his throne and thought hard about what Valentinus had just said. Suddenly, Claudius stood up and exclaimed, This man's words make sense. What's wrong with asking Jesus to save our souls? <gasps> the chief prison guard named Marcus stood up and said, Emperor, you're being misled by the words of this criminal. Why should we turn our backs on worshiping the Roman gods? when this is what we've been taught since we were children. Fearing he might also be arrested, Claudius changed his mind and cried, Take this criminal away! He's to be put to death for breaking my laws! Marcus grabbed Valentinus by the arm and led him to his prison cell. Marcus took the rusty iron key from his belt, turned the lock on the cell door, throwing Valentinus onto the cold, hard, dark f dirt floor. But Valentinus knew he was not defeated. He had just told the Emperor Claudius the Cruel about Jesus Christ. Even the court officials heard. He rejected Jesus' free gift of salvation, Valentinus sadly thought. But maybe some day he will accept it. One day... While Valentinus was in his cell and Marcus stood guard, he began to pray, Lord Jesus, you are light. Fill this prison with your light in such a way that those who are here will know you are God. When Marcus heard his prayer, he turned toward Valentinus and said, You say God is light. My daughter has been blind since birth. If your God can make her see, then I will believe in your God. So Valentinus prayed God would cause his daughter's blind eyes to see. The next morning, Valentinus was awakened by the sound of feet hitting the hard earth. As soon as he sat up on his straw mat, Marcus grabbed the bars of his cell and shook them, exclaiming, She can see! My daughter can see! and he and his entire family decided to believe in Jesus. 
But not long after Marcus's daughter was healed of blindness, Valentinus faced his punishment. He was put to death for marrying couples against the emperor's law and refusing to worship the Roman gods. This happened on February the 14th, the day the Romans celebrate the goddess Juno and the eve of the feast of Lupercalia in the year 269. And whatever happened to Emperor Claudius? Did his law forbidding marriage help him find more soldiers to fight for the Roman Empire? Months after Valentinus stood before the emperor, Claudius and his soldiers won a series of battles. As he and his soldiers were preparing to fight against a barbaric people called the Vandals, he became very sick and died in January of the year 270. And no one knows if he ever accepted Jesus' free gift of salvation. Almost 200 years after Valentinus died, a leader in the church declared February 14th to be the day Christians honor and remember the courageous life of Valentinus. This replaced the Roman holiday that celebrated the goddess Juno and the eve of the feast of Lupercalia. So now you know why Valentine's Day is more than chocolates, cards, and candied hearts. It's a day when we can remember Valentinus and celebrate his courage to tell the emperor about Jesus, marry couples in secret, and love no other God but God alone. Let the life of Valentine inspire you to boldly present Jesus Christ to a world in need of his hope. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Many of us know the verse John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But how many of us know 1 John 3.16? Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's what Valentine did. And that's what each of us as believers should do for others. You've heard that saying, will you be my valentine? What are you actually saying? You're actually saying, will you give your life for me? Will you lay down your life for me and be my valentine? That's what Christ did for us. And that's what his follower Valentine did for others. May we follow his example.
Thank you.